Welcome guys, welcome to the start of Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater. Yes, I am playing it again, like I promised. I've recently redone 2, so it's about time I started 3 again, and I cannot wait. This is one of my favourite games of all time. I even love the title screen. I love the CQC going on here, guys. Look, look at this, and you can change the colour, you can speed it up, you can do all sorts of things just by wiggling the sticks. Get it a different colour, let's go... What colour do we want? Ooh, oh, going, going for some pink and some oranges there, that's very nice. Anyway, no, enough fucking around, let's get straight into it. Uh, I do apologise if you hear any outside noises. Uh, I have got my window open, because it is very warm. However, that might just add to the ambience of the game. You know, it might just make you feel like you're in the jungle, if, you know... I, I don't know. Anyway, uh, this is obviously their HD remaster. Uh, one of the better remasters, I think, ever made, personally. Uh, it's the subsistence version of the game, which has the Metal Gear and Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake, and the fully rotatable camera. Uh, it just It's just the superior version, I think. So, we're going to go for a new game. Uh, I'm playing the MGS series for the first time. I wish I was. I'd love to re, you know, re-experience these games for the first time, but sadly, um, that's not the case. Now, I don't know which one to choose here, really. I can't remember exactly what it does. Um, I mean, MGS1 is my favourite, so I'm going to go for that. I think if you choose I Like MGS2, you get the, uh, the Raiden mask straight from the get-go. Or the, well, it's not really Raiden, but you know what I mean. Um... I, it's going to be really hard for me not to spoil this game, considering I've played through it on this channel so many times already. Uh, we're going to go for normal mode. I was thinking maybe hard, but I don't know. I found MGS2 quite a challenge, and I've played that more than three. And it has been a while since I've played three, so normal's probably the best bet. So, sorry guys. There'll still be fail. Don't you worry. There's still going to be tons of that. But um, we're about to witness... After the end of World War II, the world was split into two, East and West. This marked the beginning of the era called the Cold War. We're about to witness, sorry I nearly interrupted Snake there, about to witness my favourite freaking opening sequence. God, this thing's epic. Just from the direction to the music. So I'm going to shut up. Approaching Soviet airspace. 20 minutes to drop off. Commencing internal depressurization. Equipment check. Our main parachute. All right. You ready to go? Drop zone still showing a high pressure mass. Cab okay. Good. We've got high visibility. Cigar. Connecting oxygen hose to interior connector. Put on your mask. Does this panty waste know what he's doing? Approaching release point. Ten minutes to drop off. Hey, are you deaf? He said put out the cigar and put on your mask. Depressurization complete. Checking oxygen supply. Six minutes to drop off, opening rear hatch. Temperature minus 
46 degrees Celsius. Two minutes to drop off. Stand up. You'll be falling at 130 miles per hour. Try not to get frostbite from the wind chill. One minute to drop off. Move to the rear. Activate the alarm bottle. This is one for the history books. The world's first halo jump. Ten seconds to drop off. Stand by. Status okay. All green. Prepare for drop off. Countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. Spread your wings and fly. God be with you. my god that's so fucking good oh man ah oh, such a good seat oh, oh, oh goosebumps jack i've got some important news the head of the cia has finally given us the green light for the virtuous mission virtual mission no the virtuous mission the huh. future of our fox unit depends on it if it succeeds we'll be officially organized into a unit virtuous mission Sounds like some kind of initiation ritual. You know, don't get cocky. This isn't a training op. Right. So what exactly is this wonderful mission? Well, about two years ago, a certain Soviet scientist requested asylum in the West through one of our moles. His name is Nikolai Stepanovich Sokolov. He's head of the OKB754 Design Bureau one of the Soviet's top secret weapon research facilities, and the East's foremost expert on weapons development. Sokolov, isn't he that famous rocket scientist? The very same. On April the 12th, 1961, the Soviets achieved the first manned space flight in history. The Earth was blue, but there was no God. Well spoken. The rocket that carried Yuri Gagarin to orbit was the A-1, known as the Vostok rocket. Sokolov is said to be the man most responsible for the multi-engine cluster used in that rocket. After Gagarin's flight, Sokolov left rocket development to become the head of the newly established Design Bureau. From a lowly technician to head of a Design Bureau, that's quite a success story, so why do you want to defect? It seems he'd become afraid of his own creations. Afraid? Call it a crisis of conscience. And for that, he left his country and his family behind and went over the fence? Not exactly. One of his conditions was that his family was also to be taken safely to the West. We used a mole to get the family out first and succeeded in sneaking Sokolov over the Berlin Wall shortly afterwards. I was the one who conducted the operation. The security on the eastern side was still full of holes back then. Then what? We got Sokolov over in one piece, but the whole ordeal had left him exhausted and we checked him into a hospital in West Berlin. It took him two weeks and more than 600 miles to get from the research facility in the Soviet Union to Berlin. He was in no condition to say anything coherent. And it was only a week later that we had something much bigger on our hands. The Cuban Missile Crisis. October the 16th, 1962. President Kennedy received word that the Soviets were in the process of deploying intermediate range ballistic missiles in Cuba. The president demanded that the Soviets dismantle and remove the missiles. At the same time, he announced a naval blockade to prevent further missile shipments from reaching Cuba. But the Soviets didn't back down, instead placing their armed forces on secondary alert. Soviet transport ships carrying missiles continued on course towards Cuba. US and Soviet forces went on alert for an all-out nuclear war. Frantic negotiations were conducted through the UN's Emergency Security Council and unofficial channels to end the hair-trigger standoff. Finally, on October the 28th, the Soviet Union agreed to remove its missiles from Cuba. And so the world avoided a nuclear holocaust. But in order to get the Soviets to pull their missiles out, we had to make a deal. You mean the one where the US agreed to remove its IRBMs from Turkey? No. The Jupiter IRBMs deployed in Turkey were obsolete, and we were going to get rid of them anyway. They had no strategic value whatsoever to either the US or the Russians. The Turkey deal was a ruse. 
a cover story that was fed to the other intelligence agencies around the world. So what did the Russians really want? Sokolov. They wanted us to return Sokolov. You mean the Soviets pulled out of Cuba just to get their hands on Sokolov? That's right. What the hell was he working on? At the time, we had no idea. We were running out of time. It was either give up Sokolov or risk full-scale nuclear war. In the end, we had no choice. President Kennedy gave in to Khrushchev's demand. The next day, I got Sokolov out of the hospital, handing him over to agents on the eastern side. Sokolov kept on screaming, save me, until he disappeared from my side. Then a month ago, we received some new information from one of our moles. About Sokolov? Yes. He was taken back to the research facility and forced to continue working on the weapon in question under KGB supervision. What's more, it's on the verge of completion. So what kind of weapon is it? Something to do with space rockets? No. Missiles. Same technology. I guess you're right. We don't know the details, but it appears to be a new kind of nuclear device. For half a year now, the Soviets have been conducting frequent nuclear tests at semi palatins Something to do with the weapon, I assume. We're talking about a secret weapon so big that Khrushchev was ready to pull out of Cuba to get it back. Is Sokolov still in the facility? No. According to our intelligence, he's in Selino Yask, a place in the mountains about three miles to the west that's known as the Virgin Cliffs. The Virgin Cliffs? Nice name for a virtuous mission. They moved him there just recently. Why? Apparently, they're conducting a field test of the weapon, but it's our best chance to get him back. This mission would never have been possible if he was still in the research facility. This is our last chance. Sokolov must have known that too when he contacted us. is to infiltrate Selino Yask in the Soviet mountains, ensure the safety of Sokolov and bring him back to the west. If we don't get Sokolov back before that weapon is complete, we'll be facing a major crisis. The clock is ticking. <laughs> Once we've confirmed the rescue of Sokolov, stand by at the recovery point. A recovery balloon will be dropped at that point. Helium will be pumped into the balloon to inflate it. The process takes about 20 minutes. Once it's complete, the gunship's arm will latch onto the balloon and pull it up. The Fulton surface-to-air recovery system. I'm familiar with the theory. Take it easy. It's been combat proof. Do you think Sokolov is up to it? The shock will be less than during a parachute jump, and the arm can handle up to 500 pounds. So you're planning on going over the border in a single combat talent? She's equipped with two six-barrel 20mm Vulcan cannons, as well as two 40mm machine guns. Sounds like she could hold her own against a battalion of tanks. Even with the fuel in the reserve tank, we're facing a four-hour time limit. If all goes well, it shouldn't take more than a few hours. Home in time for dinner. But if anything goes wrong, you'll be eating dinner, breakfast, and all the rest of your meals in the jungle. Yeah, the, there's a lot of cutscenes in the intro to this, but I love it. I think it's such a great setup. MGS3 has one of the best stories in this in the series. God, there's so much to say. I, I never know where to start with a new playthrough like this, and I've probably said all this before anyway, but...
Welcome to the jungle, Snake. Super dramatic. Metal Gear Solid Snake Eater on his frickin' helmet. <laughs> Do you copy? You're already in enemy territory, and somebody might be listening in. From here on out, we'll be using code names to refer to each other. Your code name for this mission will be Naked Snake. I'll be referring to you as Snake from now on. You're not to mention your real name. Snake? What, you don't like snakes? What do you mean? You've eaten one before, haven't you? In survival training. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. I don't know if I'd ever order one in a restaurant, but... Be careful. You might not have a choice. What about you, Major? What should I call you? Hmm, let's see. I'll be... I'll be Tom. Call me Major Tom. This will be a sneaking mission. You must not be seen by the enemy. You must leave no trace of your presence. Is that clear? This kind of infiltration is the Fox Unit's speciality. In other words, weapons and equipment to procure on site. That goes for food as well. You're completely naked, just as your name implies. Great. Now I see why you asked me if I like snakes. I suppose calling me Snake was your idea of a joke, too. No. There's a good reason for that. I'll tell you later when the time is right. Gotcha. Getting back to the subject, how exactly am I supposed to feed myself? You've been issued a knife and a tranquilizer gun. Use them to hunt for food. You'll also find some medical supplies in your backpack. Yeah, about the backpack. I lost it in a tree on the way down. I see. Well, you'd better go back and get it then. You know where it is? No problem. I can see it from here. It's stuck on a branch. To climb a tree, stand in front of a tree that's covered in ivy and press the action button. <laughs> I'll be monitoring your progress over the radio. We can't risk violating Soviet airspace, but I'll be in the gunship. My frequency is 140.85. I'll give you a call if I need to talk to you. If you need to talk to me, use the send function. Okay, Snake, go get your backpack. Classic, 140.85. It never changes. No codec, though. We are in the 60s, which I think was such a cool direction for the series to take. And completely ditching the, uh, well, pretty much completely ditching the urban locations of the previous games. This is quite a change of pace. And it introduced so many new systems like camouflage, stamina. Oh my god, this game's incredible. Um, and yes, this version uh, is, is completely, you know, you can move the camera wherever you want. In the original, it was fixed camera like MGS 1 and 2, which... Well, it, it worked fine, but this is definitely superior. Um, we have a knife on us. We have a calorie mate, which is pretty much just a, a ration. Um, so we'll use our knife here. Let's collect some mushrooms. See if I remember the controls. There we go. Now, food obviously uh, spoils over time, especially animals that you kill. I'm trying to... I'm, I'm just going to be going off memory, by the way. I'm not looking at a guide. I'm just going to completely try to remember as much as I can as I play through the game. I'm sure I'll miss things. I'm sure I'll misremember things. But for the most part, I'll try my goddamn best. Look how green that sky is. Look how green everything is. It's amazing. Now, I could crawl under there. Um, I'm trying... I think there is a snake nearby that we could kill and eat. Let's have a look up here. 
Oh man, I look. I mean, MGS One is still my favorite, and that's my favorite story. But MGS Three is, it probably is the superior game in pretty much every way. And I just, I love how Kojima has melded real world events into his, you know, timeline of the Metal Gear series. I you know the Cuban Missile Crisis, all that stuff. I really do because I'm a bit of a history guy. I, I like history and the way that they twist it and make it fit their uh, their story it's great oh i love it right we need to climb this tree um how do i climb what's the action button god damn it is it triangle yes it is uh, balance along the branch while my dog is sniffing at something for some reason in the room what are you doing max I'm trying to get me backpack back that's really hard to say fast how do we drop down? That is not how you do that. <laughs> Whoops. Shit, this... Yeah, I mean, if I played on hard, can you imagine? I can barely master hanging off a branch. Triangle again. Okay. Now we get to talk to one of the most important characters in the entire series. I see you've retrieved your backpack, Snake. To equip a weapon, it's necessary to take it out of your backpack. In the survival viewer, choose... Oh god, yeah, we're gonna have tons backpack. of tutorial shit, by the your way. ...available weapons will be displayed in a window in the upper left. From that list, choose the weapon you want to equip, and press the enter button. For other equipped items, just do the same thing from item. Okay. Guys, use the survival viewer backpack. Yep, that's right. Survival is fundamental to this mission. After you've been out in the field for a while, your stamina will start to drop. If your stamina gets too low, it'll affect your performance. You won't be able to shoot accurately, for example, and your wounds won't heal as smoothly. Keep an eye on your stamina so you don't run out. To recover lost stamina, you can hunt for local flora and fauna. You can use either your tranquilizer gun or your knife to hunt. My only weapon is a Mark 22 Hush Puppy tranquilizer gun? That's right. It's been fitted with its own suppressor. However, the suppressor will deteriorate every time you fire. Once its durability reaches zero, the noise suppression effect will be gone. So don't get too trigger happy with it. Hmm. The suppressor's durability is shown in the icon. Any weapons and equipment beyond what you're carrying now, you'll have to find as you go. I have to find my own weapons and equipment? Whose crazy idea was this anyway? Solo covert actions are standard Fox operating procedure. You can't leave any traces of your presence. No weapons, equipment, footprints, sweat, or bodily waste. The same goes for bullets and cartridges, too. Your presence in enemy territory is already a violation of international conventions of warfare. There aren't supposed to be any American soldiers in Russia. It could spark an international incident. You can't let anyone see you. You can't let the enemy know you're there. This is a stealth mission. You're a ghost snake in every sense of the word. And there'll be no rescue if you're captured. The military and US government will deny any involvement in the affair. Then I'll just have to take care of myself, huh? I'm afraid so. You've been given a fake death pill for that purpose. SIS guidelines stipulate that soldiers on covert ops like this one be issued a potassium cyanide capsule. Tape it to your body so you can take it when you need to. How generous of you. Use it if you're taken prisoner by the enemy. It'll send you into a state of false death for a short time. Fooling them into thinking that I'm really dead. So how do I come back to life? Just take the revival pill. You mean that thing they put in my tooth before the mission? That's the one. Ugh. Be careful. In your if you tooth? remain in a state of false death for too long, nothing will be able to bring you back. Remember that. I'll keep it in mind. You said this was a solo mission, right? Right. I guess that means I can't count on any reinforcements. Correct. The mission rests entirely in your hands. No pressure. Real one-man army. Relax. There's a support team ready to back you up over the radio. Who? I'll introduce them to you. This time, survival is of utmost importance. The first member of the support team will be in charge of monitoring your physical condition, acting as a medic, so to speak, as well as recording your mission data. She's a member of Fox as well, and she's here on the gunship with me. She? 
Hello, Snake. I'm Paramedic. Nice to meet you. Paramedic? As in a medic who comes in by parachute. Aren't you going to tell me your real name? Are you going to tell me yours, Mr. Snake? My name, huh? It's John Doe. And they call you Jack for short. You're a regular Captain Nemo. A name means nothing on the battlefield. After a week, no one has a name. <laughs> What's your name? Jane Doe. Very funny. I wasn't joking, but I'll tell you my name only if you manage to make it back alive. My frequency is 145.73. She's also in charge of recording your mission data. Whenever you want to save, send a message over the reserved save frequency. 140.96. So saving lets me record my mission data. That's right. It also records the state of your health. Good to know. There's one more person I want to introduce you to, Snake. Huh? Speaking of snakes, you remember the boss, don't you? A legendary soldier and your mentor. Actually, it was the boss that got the DCI's authorization in the first place. She's going to be serving as Fox's mission advisor. The boss is? She also helped me plan this mission. She and I were at SAS together. Jack, is that you? How many years has it been? Boss? That's right. It's me. <sighs> Talk to me. Let me hear your voice. It's been five years, 72 days, and 18 hours. Wow. You've lost weight. You can tell just by the sound of my voice. Of course I can. I know all about you. Really? Well, I don't know anything about you. What's that supposed to mean? Why'd you disappear on me all of a sudden? I was on a top secret mission. Hmm. You didn't need me anymore. But there were still so many things I wanted you to teach me. No, I taught you everything you needed to know about fighting techniques. I taught you all I could. The rest you needed to learn on your own. Techniques, sure. But what about how to think like a soldier? How to think like a soldier? I can't teach you that. A soldier needs to be strong in spirit, body, and technique. And the only thing you can learn from someone else is technique. In fact, technique doesn't even matter. What's most important is spirit. Spirit and body are like two sides of a single coin. They're the same thing. I can't teach you how to think. You'll just have to figure it out for yourself. Listen to me, Jack. Just because soldiers are on the same side right now doesn't mean they always will be. Having personal feelings about your comrades is one of the worst sins you can commit. Politics determine who you face on the battlefield. And politics are a living thing. They change along with the times. Yesterday's good might be tomorrow's evil. Is that why you abandoned me? No, it had nothing to do with you. I already told you, Jack. I was on a top secret mission. A soldier has to follow whatever orders he's given. It's not his place to question why. But you're looking for a reason to fight. You're a natural born fighter, but you're not quite a soldier. A soldier is a political tool, nothing more. That's doubly true if he's a career soldier. Right and wrong have no place in his mission. He has no enemies and no friends. Only the mission. You follow the orders you're given. That's what being a soldier is. I do whatever I have to to get the job done. I don't think about politics. That's not the same thing. Sooner or later, your conscience is going to bother you. In the end, you have to choose whether you're going to live as a soldier or just another man with a gun. There's a saying in the Orient, loyalty to the end. Do you know what it means? Being patriotic. It means devoting yourself to your country. I follow the president and the top brass. I'm ready to die for them if necessary. The president and the top brass won't be there forever. Once their terms are up, others will take their place. I follow the will of the leader no matter who's in charge. People aren't the ones who dictate the missions. Then who does? The times. People's values change over time, and so do the leaders of a country. So there's no such thing as an enemy in absolute terms. The enemies we fight are only enemies in relative terms, constantly changing with the times. As long as we have loyalty to the end, there's no point in believing in anything, even in those we love. And that's the way a soldier's supposed to think? 
The only thing we can believe in with absolute certainty is the mission, Jack. All right, but do me a favor. What is it? Call me Snake. Snake? Oh, right. Your code name is Snake. It suits you well. That's right. The legendary unit that the boss put together during World War II was a snake. The Cobra unit. A group of heroes that brought the war to an end and saved the world. As long Cobra as you've got a legendary hero backing you up, you'll be fine. Isn't that right, Snake? Yeah. I can't think of anyone else I'd rather have with me. Oh, and one more thing, boss. Yes? It's good to hear your voice again. Same here. After all, who knows if either of us will make it out alive. Snake, you are always best at urban warfare and infiltrating buildings. But this is the jungle. Survival is going to be key. Those CQC techniques I taught you are sure to come in handy. CQC? Close quarters combat, huh? I've been in the Green Berets for the past few years. I'm probably pretty rusty. Not to worry. I'll be here to help you remember. After all, this is your first actual survival mission. I'll be supporting you over the radio. Where are you, boss? Next to the Major? The boss is communicating with us by radio from aboard a permit-class submarine in the Arctic Ocean. My frequency is 141.80. Call me if you need my advice on battle techniques. Gotcha. Your mission is to retrieve Dr. Sokolov. Dr. Sokolov is being held in an abandoned factory located to the north of your current position. Avoid heavy combat and don't let anyone see you. Don't forget that this is a stealth mission. You don't say. Snake, try to remember some of the basics of CQC. Commencing virtuous mission now. You goddamn right we are, Snake. So, MGS3, the birth of Big Boss. Or at least the beginnings of Big Boss. Big Boss begins. That's that's what we're gonna call this. Um Right, so yeah, there's a lot to take in straight off the bat, isn't there? Oh look, there's a snake. Which, by the way, guys, I'm terrified of snakes. And I did just jump then when I saw it. So, you know, playing this game is not easy for me. That's our uh, snake tranked there. It's going to turn into a handy box. And now we have it in our inventory. Snake G. So, yeah, we've got our camouflage here, which you change on the fly to better blend into your uh, surroundings. It's it's a, it's not the, like, the most... What's the word? Smooth system? Because you have to go into the menu every single time. Um, especially when you're going from different bits of terrain in short succession, it can be a bit of a pain in the ass, but it works well. Uh, you got the backpack, so at the moment we've got all this stuff equipped. Um, however, everything weighs something, and the more weights you carry, the more stamina, or the quicker your stamina will deplete, so I'm probably going to turn off a bunch of this stuff. Um, there's no radar in this, so... Like, things like your active sonar can be useful, but I'm going to try and go without for now. Um, I've got the fake death pill. They don't weigh anything anyway, but... Oh, you can't get rid of your revival pill, because obviously it's in your tooth, which is ridiculously... Ugh. Uh, cigar we don't need. Binoculars, yes we do. Uh, I'm going to turn all that stuff off. Right, weapons, we're going to probably... The the microphone is uh, something that can be quite useful. We've we found a giant anaconda, guys. Uh, and that is in a cage, so it will not go off. You can have up to three animals, I think, in a cage. Um, and we've got a Siberian ink cap. But we don't need to worry about eating anything just yet. Um, and this is where you actually eat it. So there you go, we've got three cages... Calorie mate, and, uh, yeah. Right. And we have a map and shit like that. Okay. Is there anything else in this beginning area that I need to get? Again, I... I've played through this game many times, but not for a, for a few years, so... I might be, uh, a little bit rusty. 
Dremuchij Swampland. Now, I'm going to be butchering all these Russian names, so forgive me. I'm not Russian, I speak no other language other than English, and that's, uh, that's debatable at times. Especially if you listen to my commentary enough, you'll be questioning my mastery of the English language, but anyway, let's see. Now, this this opening Virtuous Mission is kind of like a self-contained game in a way, because you can get tons of weapons that, in the main game, take ages to find, but like you'll be able to find a sniper rifle, an assault rifle, I think a shotgun. I'm going to try and get as many as I can, but I really don't know where they are. Um, let's try and see if I can spot any birds. Because you can shoot, you can shoot pretty much anything and eat pretty much anything. But we're about to come across the dreaded swamp, full of alligator-looking things. This area used to always scare me when I was a kid. Uh, I mean, they're, they're pretty slow, and if you leave them alone, they pretty much leave you alone, but if you get too close, they will attack you. Uh, I like to just put them asleep, because uh, it makes me feel safer. However, they do... Oh, maybe, maybe if you shoot them in the head, they don't take too many darts to put to sleep. I think they just wake up really quickly. Uh, we just oh we got some bug juice. That's good. I think if we use that bug juice, it can stop. Well, it stops bugs getting at you. Uh, I'm gonna equip that. Cause I'm not sure if it protects you against leeches, which you can get from uh, from swimming in water or crap like that. Yeah, keeps away hornets and leeches, so if we come across any hornet's nests, which I think I see one actually above that little island, um, we can knock them down and we won't be attacked. Is there anything over here? Oh, we found a grenade. Okay, don't know why there's a grenade randomly sat there. I'm going to put you guys to sleep because I don't trust you. Random flies buzzing about. Oh, there's an item over there as well. Oh, got some bullets. Excellent. Uh, I am going to knock this down just to see. Oh, a birdie. We got a birdie. We got a nest. Got some ointment. Oh, shit. He woke up so fast, man. Oh, my God. Look. Look at all that blood on my fucking uniform. And yes, you can sink in this stuff if you stay in it too long, so don't, you know, keep on the move. Crap, we've taken some damage already. That sucks. I, oh, I'm sinking, I'm sinking. Oh, shit. Crap. 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 Oh, we just made it. And we found ourselves another suppressor, so when this one runs out, we can replace it. Yay. Is there anything else around here? I mean, we could kill these things and eat them as well if we wanted to. You do get quite a bit of meat from them, but shouldn't really need to. Uh, anything else? Yeah, they wake up so fast. I'll leave them alone. Oh, another snake. Different kind, though. Is that a python? A reticulated python, perhaps? Let's have a look. It is, and we have captured a magpie as well. I don't... I don't know why... Would you want to eat a magpie? Should we try... Oh, we're not, we'll, we'll eat the magpie first, I think. As, as cruel as that is. They're not real, guys. It's just a game. It's just a game. And, you know, out in the jungle, you got to do what you got to do. you got to survive. And now we're in, uh, I think, the area with the, the rope bridge. And Snake's going to do some scouting. Oh, no, we're not. No, sorry. My bad. It's the area after this. Now, whenever I play this game, or whenever I've played it in the past, 
I've never really used CQC that much. I've spotted two enemy soldiers. They're probably KGB troops sent to guard Sokolov. AK-47s and grenades. So I'm going to try and use it a bit more. Uh, I can't actually remember how Your to use it. Your presence in Soviet territory is already a violation of international law. We can't let the Kremlin find out that the CIA and the American government are involved. Contact with the enemy is strictly prohibited. Don't engage them in battle either. This is a stealth mission. Got that? The Major is right. The point of this mission is to sneak through the jungle without being seen. The success of the mission depends on how well you use your camouflage. Change your camouflage by selecting Camouflage from the Survival Viewer. Yeah, 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 I the know, I know. The uniform option lets you pick your uniform, while the face option lets you change your... This ain't my first rodeo. Choosing camouflage that blends in with your surroundings will help you conceal yourself more effectively. Also, don't forget that anything that moves will stand out in the jungle. If you just stand up and run around like an idiot, you're bound to be spotted. But if you crawl instead, you should be able to sneak by without being noticed. Okay. You can see how effective your camouflage is by looking at the camo index. The camo index shows how well your current camouflage... I know all this stuff. I'm just going to skip it, guys. I'm just going to skip it. Keys to make yourself one with nature. Keep that in mind. And uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. We know. Did, did you guys realize that this is a stealth mission? Like, I'm not supposed to be seen? I didn't know that. I'm glad the game told me, like, a million times. Right, Woodland Tiger Stripe. We're not very well camouflaged there, but if we get to the ground, 85% is pretty good. It's pretty good. Now, I'm going to try and remember how to use CQC. And I think if you use the D-pad, he goes into stalking mode, which makes very little noise. Peekaboo. Oh, he's shit. He saw that? Really? Oh, crap. I guess I was like 0%. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, shit. This playthrough could be, could be full of fail. I'm just letting you know right now. You turn around. Now, you can shoot the radios out that they've got on their, uh, on their chests there. Which can prevent uh, an alert. Don't know which way this guy goes. I want to get behind him. Or maybe hold him up or something. But I do not remember what the CQC button is. And I maybe should have checked the uh, the tutorial in the menus. I think it might be circle. Alright. You stay there, buddy. Don't turn around. Don't turn around. You keep moving. And... Huzzah! Right, how do I interrogate? Answer me. We won't hand over Sokolov. Oh, really? Oh, really? Let go of me! No! I'm gonna choke you. Yeah! Go to sleep. I could have thrown him to the ground as well, but that makes more noise. And just to make sure he doesn't wake up, pop right, oh, right under the eye. That's gross. That would, oh, because that is a needle. That is a freaking needle going in your face. All right, what's over here? Uh, I think we can climb that tree. Let's keep an eye out. I mean, we've got enough animals, really, for any stamina. And this mission isn't that tough or long, anyway. But, um, well, it's not that tree we can climb. But there's no radar, so you got to watch out, because these guards are camouflaged as well. They will be very difficult to spot sometimes. I think there's one in this area. Or maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's an item this way. Oh, there is. Ah, we got the sniper rifle. Sweet. Yeah, it's amazing that you can get all these items in this little mission, because, you know, it's not the main part of the game, but it's nice that you can find all this stuff. 
Right, now th these, these guys should be asleep for a good while, so we shouldn't have to worry about them. Let's crawl in this log. Let's see what's in this log. Get in the log snake. Oh, more bug juice. Jolly good. Jolly good. Right, let's get the noculars out. Scope the place out. Can I see anyone? Oh, there's some fruit in the trees we could knock out. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I was so excited for this. Oh, birdie. I was so excited for MGS3. I remember watching the trailer that I got in the demo disc. Like, I, I shit you not, probably hundreds of times. It was such a cool trailer. It showed off gameplay and just the fact that it would be Metal Gear, but in the jungle. It just blew my mind. Oh my god, I was so, so pumped for it. I'm going to shoot that bird. Your man, birdie. Your man. Ah, there's a dude. I see him. Now, this isn't MGS5. We can't mark them. They're not going to stay on our fucking screen. Oh, and actually, I can't... You know what? We'll eat... Uh, we've lost a little bit of stamina, so let's... Let's eat that magpie. Mmm, magpie. I mean, it's got it's got pie in the in the title, so it must it must taste nice. Oh, he didn't like that. Okay, not much stamina for that. Okay. Note to self: he does not like magpies, but I think if you eat enough of them, he will grow to like them more, and you'll get more stamina. But it takes a while. Bird E, ha, get it, birdie. Uh, um, now, if I remember correctly, wasn't there, like, a fucking King Cobra in this grass? Or is that later on? Because that kind of snake will poison you. Like, it is, very, it is a very mad, angry snake. My camouflage is shite in this place. Oh, squares will be better. But I'm going to be going back into the grass soon anyway, so fuck it. Now, please don't any, be any snakes in this grass. Don't you do it. I'll be very, 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 very jumpy. Now, ah, there's the tree we can climb. So there should be a dude down that way. There's a dude that way. I can't remember if there's anything in that tree. I'm going to go this way first. I'm taking my time, guys. We're not going to... Oh, shit. Who saw me? Who saw? Oh shit! Freeze! Oh, we we got him. Please I'm gonna shoot you in the nads. Yep, shake for me, buddy. Shake for me, baby. Give me those bullets. Good night. Don't think you can get dog tags in this one like you could in two. Because he didn't drop any, did he? Hmm. I can't believe we got seen then. Damn. Oh, fuck. I see you. And they can hear you as well if you move too quickly. Is he going to turn around? Yes, he is. Good night. I just want to put him to sleep and then I can explore this place a little bit. In relative safety. There's a dude down there. I know there is. Yep, I see him. Is he going to see me? Oh, shit. There we go. Right, that should be all of them. I only, yeah, I don't remember there being any more dudes. Are there any snakes in the grass? Anything in this log? Ooh, yep, yeah, something. Thermal goggles! So we can go all Predator, which I remember unlocking the, uh, the stealth camo in this game and then wanting to use the thermal goggles at the same time, but you can't, which sucks, because I wanted to be the Predator. But uh, sadly not. Let's let's show those off. 
They only weigh one kilogram, so not that, it's not that bad. But look at that, that is proper predator mode, but my god does it hurt my eyes. <laughs> it's not bad during the night time, but uh, we don't really need it right now. I'm going to grab this dude, I'm going to shake him down for some items. Another grenade, which hopefully I won't have to use. Any snakes in this grass? Sometimes they are difficult to spot. And they scare me when they surprise me. Okay, not much going on over here. Oh, hang on. Some more bullets. Excellent. And it looks like we have five suppressors as well, which is plenty. Plenty. So we got the sniper rifle. But I'm gonna try I'm gonna try and be as stealthy as possible, and the sniper is pretty loud. Are there any points climbing this tree? Apart from it I think in the in the like the demo or the uh, the trailer that I used to watch over and over, you used to climb this tree and like dangle from it. And I'm gonna show you now how fucking cool it looks when you hang from the tree. And shoot at the same time. Look how cool that looks. I remember seeing that and just going, Oh my god, this is going to be the best game ever made. And I love it. That was a very fancy way of getting back on the branch. Right, enough messing around. Let's get to the next area. Ah, da da da. Uh, this way. Actually, no. Before I do that, I didn't check over here. Those guards are still sleeping. There we go. Right, another grenade. Cool. Now this next area is the one with the rope bridge. And if I remember correctly, you can find the assault rifle here. So we've got one guy at the end, underneath, a hornet's nest, and Snake smiles. He knows what he's going to do. Evil bastard. That poor guard probably doesn't have any bug juice. And he's going to pay for it. Ho oh, ho yes, he's going to pay. Let's get it just about right. It's kinda of hard to see. I want to see the guard. Has he run off? Oh yeah, yeah, he's running across the bridge. No, we didn't want me goggles. So he runs across and scares the other guys away, but they will come back, so you kind of want to be quick if you want to get across here without being seen. Um, the one thing about the rope bridge is it's very unstable and you can fall off the side very, very easily. Especially if you cut the ropes, which I used to do so many times. It was so fun. I'm going to go hide in this grass. Because I think I was probably not quite quick enough. They're going to start Getting back in this area. Uh, which, 85% um, camo, that's not too bad. Uh, oh, maybe I could have gone. But I'd rather trank him just to be safe. Hmm. You know what we haven't done? We haven't really called anyone yet, so let's do that. While we're waiting. Uh, ground control to Major Tom. Sokolov should be at the abandoned factory to the north, so head in that direction. Cool. That's what I'm doing. Uh, there is someone else you can talk to, isn't there? Or is that just in Operation Snake Eater? 
Now, paramedic, you can talk to her. She talks a lot about films of the era, which is really cool. I see you've captured a giant anaconda. The giant anaconda is believed to be the largest snake in the world in terms of weight and diameter. It's not poisonous, but its large size makes it extremely powerful. They say it even eats crocodiles. Its only natural predator is man. And snake. And snake. Huh. Got it. So how does it taste? I knew you were going to ask me that. Glad I didn't disappoint you. So? Well, the guide says it tastes all right. Good. I'll have to try some. Ugh. Ooh. Couldn't do that. Sorry. Nope. 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 Camouflage is an indispensable tool when you're sneaking through the jungle. To use camouflage. Yeah, okay. If you're just going to tell me that basic stuff, boss, I'm not going to call you ever again. God damn it. Right, are they going to come back? Are they going to come back? Seriously, not going to come back? I know for a fact they do. I know for a fact. But I ain't moving until they do, because I'll be spotted. And I don't want to be spotted yet, because I've barely started the game. Come on, guys. If I make a move, I know they're going to come around that corner. Oh, he just knows it. Oh, he knows it. They're going to do it. Hmm. Yeah, I knew it. I knew it. Three of the bastards. Four of the bastards! Holy shit. Can I change my camo to anything better? I'm, I know I'm at AC5, but still. If they get too close, they're gonna see me. Leaf. There we go. 90%. That's nice. Alright. Please don't see me. You go back across the bridge, you guys. That's it. All in a line. Have they gone? Okay. And where's the other dude? Oh, my camera's gone down already. So yeah, it's a little bit fiddly. It's not the... the best system. But I guess there's no other way you could do it, really. Not that I know. So we're back to the Tiger Stripe. They're off that way. They shouldn't be a problem. This dude shouldn't be either. A little bit fiddly with a the stick. There we go. Now hopefully they won't come back for a while. Oh shit, no this dude is. He's coming back. But yeah, you can make the bridge really difficult for them to go across by cutting the ropes, which is just hilarious. Oh shit. Right, he's down. They're probably going to see him, though. Now, I could just run that way to get out of the area, but I want this freaking item down here. Even though I'm probably not going to use it, I, I always feel the need to grab this thing. And you have to kind of be very careful, because that is a very long drop. Many times I've fallen down there. The XM-116, so it's the M16, basically. Nice assault rifle. Got some bullets. Pentasmin! For the old sniping. Stops the jitters. Alright, I think we're good. I think we're good. Now we're about to enter quite a tricky area. There's quite a few guards in this next place because it is the factory. The factory where Sokolov is actually being held. So... Gotta have our wits about us. reached the abandoned factory where Sokolov is supposedly being held. This place is a dump. I 
I can't see Sokolov from here. The security is pretty tight. There are sentries posted around the perimeter. I wonder how many are inside. Only one way to find out, Snake. Only one way to find out. Your objective, Sokolov, is inside the factory. They should be holding him in a room in the northeast section. Northeast section. Got it. Be careful. Your mission is to bring Sokolov back alive. He must not be exposed to any kind of danger. And do not approach Sokolov while in the alert phase. Right. Oh, and one more thing, Snake. You mean there's more? No, it's just that when you get to Sokolov, I want you to tell him something from me. And that is? Sorry for being so late. Is that all? Yes. Understood. Beginning my approach to the target. Alrighty. Well, guys, that's going to have to wait till next time. Uh, this is going to be... I think we're going to do longer videos with this series, because... Well, especially with the opening being so full of cutscenes, at least now we've had a bit of gameplay. Next time, we're going to go try and sneak into the factory, find Sokolov, and get him out of here. Nothing can go wrong. Oh, no. Nothing. Nothing bad's going to happen. I hope you're going to enjoy this, guys. It's one of my favourite games, as you know. I'm a big MGS fan. And uh, I hope I do it justice. So, see you next time.